earlier this year I was completely addicted to making these beautiful hex petal flowers from lots of different Liberty prints but I wasn't sure what I would do with them so I've created this really simple quilt top that I'm going to applique them onto and I'm going to show you that process today in this video so thank you so much for joining me, I really hope that you enjoy it First I'd like to give a really big thank you to Serious Readers for very kindly sponsoring this video and I'll tell you all about Serious Readers and their wonderful Serious Lights just a little bit later on. So to begin with I took this lovely fabric panel that I bought from a wonderful company called Madaha who make lovely embroidery kits and they also create some fabric panels from their original artwork and I just love this one, I love the watercolour effect of the florals and I felt like the colours really went well with some of the Liberty prints, the more pastel ones that I have in my collection. So I had this idea to make the panel the focal point in the centre of the quilt and to create a series of borders going around it using Liberty prints and also some solid fabric as well. And the idea is that the Liberty prints will frame the fabric panel really nicely and on the solid fabrics I will applique the hex petal flowers that I have been creating over the last few months. To make a hex petal flower you need a hexagon for the centre and six hex petal shapes. I'm using three quarters of an inch size but you can use any size you like and I made 40 of them for this quilt. I'm using hexiform which you leave in and you don't remove it like you do with paper and I'm basting my shapes with a Soline glue pen. I'll leave a link in the description box with more videos that explain about hexiform in detail if you're interested and also how to base shapes. I go through it in much more detail in another video. When it comes to basting your hex petal I always start with one of the straight edges and then I just tease the fabric around the curve and this creates little pleats which will give you that lovely curved edge and you can manipulate it a little bit and push down any little points that you might get to make sure you get a nice curved shape. Now once you've basted all of your shapes we are ready to stitch them together and I always start with the central hexagon and the petal that goes on top. Line up those straight edges that join them together and then get your needle right in the point and do a locking knot so it's not going to come undone and then just simply whip stitch all the way along to the next corner. I do another locking knot right in the corner here to secure everything and then we're ready to add the next petal so I just work around in a clockwise motion but you can do it in any way you like. I now stitch upwards to join those two petals together in exactly the same way as before and next I will carry my thread and stitch along that seam and then I just work in that motion all the way around to join all of the petals. Now the flowers are ready, I can start constructing the quilt top. So first of all I gave the fabric panel a really good press and then I decided to begin by making some narrow borders around the fabric panel to frame it really nicely. So I chose this lovely pale pink floral liberty print and I begin by just neatening that raw edge. And then I cut some one and a half inch strips. Next I trimmed down the seam allowance on the fabric panel. The seam allowance was at half an inch and I trimmed it down to quarter of an inch. So 
So now it's time to attach the borders and I began by doing the left and the right side borders first by placing them right sides together and stitching all the way along the seam with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I made my strips actually longer than the fabric panel. The fabric panel is about 17 and a half inches or so. My strips were a bit longer so I could trim them down to size and that's why I did the left and the right first because then I'm going to go on to do the top and the bottom strips and I'm also going to add some corner stones here just to make really nice corners. So I'm looking through my basket to pick a contrast colour and I think something yellow will really go nicely. So I'm just cutting four one and a half inch squares to make the cornerstones. I just attach them to either end of the remaining border strips and then I will attach them to the fabric panel. To make sure my seams all lined up properly, I just like to pin these seams in place just to keep everything nice and straight and lined up. Now you can see here how I'm planning the next round of borders and I'm going to use a solid white fabric here and this will be the first row or round that will have the hex petal flowers appliqued on. So I'm just positioning them to get an idea of how many I can fit on each border. And I cut these borders at five inches wide so that they will be four and a half inches wide when sewn together and that just left a nice amount of space around the edge for the flowers to fit on. So once I was happy with that layout I decided to applique the flowers onto the borders first for this one before attaching them to what I've made of the quilt so far. So what I'm doing is just marking out the seam allowance so then I can position my flowers equally and I know that they're not going to be in the seam allowance and everything's going to be even. So I really like using this air erasable so line pen it's really great it draws very easily onto fabric it does disappear quickly but it's one that I use all the time it's really handy so I'm just marking those seam lines first before I then position the flowers in place So after finding the centre point of the strip, I'm now placing my 
flowers onto it just to get a nice balance and make sure everything is nice and even. You could of course pin them in place but I like to use the glue pen and glue them in place. It's just nice and easy and there won't be any pins getting in the way. I'm positioning the central flower first onto that strip and then I'll use that as a guide to then evenly space out the rest of the flowers. So once I was happy with the position, that everything was even, an even distance between the flowers, an even distance between the top and bottom seam allowances, I then used my favourite Invisifil thread to applique the flowers to the fabric. Now even though I started this project way back in the summer, and it is technically a quick quilt to make, as quite often happens with quilting and crafting in general, the seasons have changed and we're now almost in winter. Now I have to admit that this time of year is not my favourite. I struggle with the shorter days and the darkness. So this year I'm determined to get really cosy and to make sure I'm doing some stitching every night possible. So to do this I'm making sure that I light the fire in the living room, make a nice warm cosy drink, perhaps light a few candles and then make sure I've got a lovely project to work on. One of the things that has really made a big difference in my sewing this year has been using the wonderful high definition light that was sent to me by Serious Readers. Serious Readers are a British company and they make a wonderful range of Serious Lights and they hand build them here in the UK. I have the high definition light and I have it in this lovely heritage white colour and it matches the decor in my living room or in my sewing room so it's nice to be able to move it around the house to take it where I want to stitch. It wouldn't be possible for me to sew in the living room in the evenings without some sort of light so this light has made a huge difference. Not only is it really easy to see the colours and to match the colours of threads which is something I've been doing with one of the cross stitch kits that I've just started working on but also it's extending my crafting time into the evenings and I'm really determined to make the most of that this year. I'll leave a link in the description box to the Serious Readers website and if you were to decide to buy something from their Serious Lights range, whether that is the High Definition, which is the one I have, or the Alex Light or the Classic Light, if you use the offer code EMMA22 then you will receive a free compact light which is worth £150 and I have one of those and I really love that light too. It's great for sewing and also for reading. Also, the offer code provides free international shipping, so it really doesn't matter where you live in the world. A huge thank you to Serious Readers for sponsoring this video. They've been such a lovely company to work with, and they have excellent customer service, and their products are really great, so thank you so much to them. Now back to the quilt. So now the flowers are appliqued to the backing fabric, you can see how nice the curves hold their shape because they have the hexiform inside. If we'd use paper then you would have to remove the paper and this can distort your curve. So it's another reason why I really love using hexiform. Plus I really like the raised texture that it gives. So now after repeating that process with the other three borders, I'm moving on to my next round of borders and I've got a nice wide Liberty Fabric border to frame those hex petal flowers and I'm doing the same thing, I'm 
making them longer and then cutting them down to match. It certainly is going to be a very busy quilt, but I really like the scrappy nature of all the different prints. So I'm pressing my seams and then I'm going to go and add the rest of the borders in exactly the same way. And here you can see I have repeated the process again. This time instead of white I've used a pale lavender for the solid fabric and then another Liberty print on the outer edge. Now you may be wondering why have you attached that solid fabric without appliquing the flowers on as you did before? Well I decided to change my process for this stage because I wanted to line up my next round of flowers with the existing ones and I just knew that even if I was very careful and measured it all there would be a chance that they would be a bit out and I really like doing things by eye I do most things by eye it just feels right to me so I even though I will measure to position them I'm also positioning them by eye as well and just lining them up with the ones that are already there. To me this was the best way to do this next stage. It's also worth mentioning as well that if you wanted to create a quilt like this you don't actually have to have the same fabric panel that I've got in the centre. You could do this process using anything in the centre, any size piece and just working your way around adding the borders and then appliquing the flowers on. It's a really quick way of creating a quilt. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's really colourful, really pretty. I could have made it bigger, but I'm quite happy with this size. This is going to be a really nice lap quilt. Now, I'm going to show you in this video how I just basted the layers and I'm using a large piece of Liberty as the backing fabric and I've never used Liberty as backing fabric before and this print is actually one of my very favourites in my very favourite colourway. So I'm treating myself to that. I wouldn't normally use Liberty as a backing. I've got my Hobbs batting and I'm using the 505 basting spray with a bit of help from my husband. He's really good at basting quilts. <laughs> so he helped me to baste the backing fabric onto the wadding first and then we flipped it over and we basted the quilt top. And I'm planning to hand quilt this, but I didn't want to rush that stage. I wanted to save that for another video. So there will be a part two to this video in which I will show you how I'm hand quilting this. And hopefully I'll be able to show you how I bind it as well. So I'm sorry that wasn't included in this video, but that will be coming soon because I have already made a really good start on the hand quilting. So thank you ever so much for joining me today and I really hope to see you next time, whether it will be the part two to this video or it will be something else, there will be another video really soon. So take care of yourselves and I'll see you shortly. Bye bye.